I'm just going to start this video with an apology. Um, the crap that I think about when I'm sitting here not ready to make a video is usually the most important stuff. And I often disappoint myself on how little of it I managed to get on even the, the little box videos, uh, live streams, just in general. I feel like I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing because I have to spend most of my time fighting the fact that I'm not really able to do it. And see, I'm going to go into that tangent and then forget what I was going to say to begin with. The government was really smart. If, if you know, the United States was uh, competent to defend us, they would have sent me a, just a one-way Blackberry by now. Just I, I can communicate with y'all, and, and you uh, send the information I provide to the relevant, you know, person researches that particular type of thing and America and the world would be a lot safer and people would be able to know so much more about themselves about each other and, and finally come to peace with just being who you are. You know, my wife's made a video or two on here. Complaining about how the Russian trolls actually managed to break me. To a large extent, they have. Just because I haven't given up doesn't mean, you know, what I'm doing here is working. I'm still talking about this. I'm not talking about the reason I hit record. Now that is how hair should be. All the time. Right there. Fuck yeah. This is what happens when I go to sleep. Um, right after my hair dries out. After taking a shower. So it's like. Perfectly clean. Silky dry hair. Fuck yeah. Okay. And there's 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 nothing there's nothing I can do. I'm you know, I'm just trying to make the most of it. I have to wet that down and tame it again. <laughs> okay. Oh no, I better have one fucking cigarette. You know why I'm broken? Because the Russian trolls made it clear to me that it doesn't matter what I do on these videos. 
they're not going to let the really valuable ones succeed. Even if I did exactly what I did in 2011, raise my hands above myself and part the clouds. Storm clouds to blue skies. I did that on video. It wouldn't matter. And that alone is enough for me to not even be able to do it. <laughs> so yeah, broken. Sure. I was, uh... Always capable of what I'm capable of now. In my awakened state, I was simply capable of conscious capability as opposed to instinctual. That is to say, I can choose to do something. Lightning from. If anything, over the course of this YouTube channel, that, uh, that ability is slowly dwindled. It's very interesting to me how when I first awoke in 2011 on YouTube simply wasn't as big as it is now. I would get much more replies, much more comments, much more replies to my comments. And there were literally thousands of people willing to make fun of me for everything from thinking I had seen a UFO to when I awoke, announcing who I was. Oh, yes. I got what you would expect. Just droves of people. But then I make an actual channel. I have videos with hundreds of thousands of views. Just a couple. Got, you know, minus the probably hundred or two hundred thousand that have been stolen from them. But even if you don't count that, over a hundred thousand views on several videos. But I don't get a thousandth of the comments. I'm still trying to get to why I started the video. I'm still not there yet. So know that if you don't watch all of my videos, you're probably missing out on, on the, the biggest points. If this is the first stand-up head video that you watch. Um, usually those are the most important ones. I'm sorry that they're the least entertaining. But I make these videos because I notice that humanity lacks the wisdom did I make these videos to try to provide it? Uh, 
America is in such a grave danger. You know what was happening in 1985 when the Russians first approached Donald Trump? That was the peak of the spy war. We had found people in our own government, and we had this Russian guy pointing him out, pointing out people that were spies. And the entirety of the FBI was... I'm sure very focused on this because they had people in their own ranks and they had people in the CIA even. Could have been Russian spies. Well. at that point and from then on since Donald Trump was approached by the Russians he's become a household name understand this in 1985 because of the secrets that American traders shared with the Russians The Russians were given an all-out first strike capability against our Navy. Think about that. Just, just keep thinking about that. Because of the espionage that we convicted people of. Stuff that you can go and look, look up Johnny Walk. Spock. Convicted spot. John Wall. In fact, there's a there's a YouTube video I've been watching. Traitors within. Spies who sold out America. I'm only halfway through it. And it uh, chronologizes the different convicted traitors from this period. And it all kind of fell apart for them. It all kind of uh, went to a, a peak point in 1985 because of this Russian guy who was willing to sell out the people who had provided him information. Dingo, not now. Go on. Sleepy time. It's still four o'clock in the morning. Go on. I have to yell louder because he went further down the hallway and he's doing the same damn thing. Time I got the camera paused, he laid down. Oh, damn it, I finished my cigarette. I'm going to pause it so I can pack the pack. Hi. <sighs> yes, it is. Uh, 3.45-ish. Oh, look, I started the video at 3.30 about that.
Well, let's see here. Nineteen eighty five. There has a uh, there's been a lot of interesting uh, things in movies related to it. Before I go into that, go back to the future. Consider this. Ronald Reagan was basically about to start meeting with Gorbachev for peace negotiations. And at this point, We had basically learned that the Russians could outright win a war against us. That was the assessment of the CIA due to the fact that the Russians had been given so much information by these spies. The official assessment was that the Russians could win a war against us. That's when we started negotiating. And it was because not only did they from that point have a military advantage, a general strategic advantage, due to what they knew about how to disable American ships. They knew everything about all of our submarines, okay? Dingo, not now, man. Come on. Go back to sleep, please. Ladies and gentlemen, Dingo drinking water. Okay, come lay down by me. Good boy. Okay, so to fully understand the gravity of what I'm trying to say here as far as the historical perspective of American strategic standing in the world, um, watch, watch this Traitors Within documentary or do some research about the spies that were rounded up in 1985. Because what we really got to worry about is the spy or spies who weren't. I think it's become very clear that Donald Trump has been for quite some time one such spy. Now, in 1985, when Johnny Walker was being interviewed, he said something very interesting. Convicted spy sold secrets to the Russians. No chin. Just happens to not have a chin. A lot more chin than his weight would, you know, like more of this than the blubber around his waist should dictate, you know, like they just have an excessive amount of chinlessness for their weight, even though they're overweight, like Alex Jones, like Donald Trump. Well, this guy had that one tone. And he said something along the lines of, uh, 
I sold secrets or or whatever. Or it doesn't matter that he did what he did. Basically. Because it's a country that we're not at war with. We never have been at war with. And never will be at war with. That sounded very familiar to me. It's a talking point that's been used a lot lately. By Russian spies. Russian spies on TV. Now, the fact of the matter is, due to well, extra dimensional warfare, which I tried not to talk much about. but also due to, frankly, good old-fashioned espionage-based provocateurism. It became quite rational to doubt whether someone's spiritual standing or their religious beliefs had any bearing whether their religious beliefs had any bearing on corruptibility. Now, a lot of people might even roll their eyes at me. For bringing that up. And I understand exactly every thought that's in their head when they do that. Much better than they do themselves. But although that perspective is understandable. And generally speaking. Intellectually superior to that of. The religious folk of the day. I can grant you that. It is as the understanding of that dog right there of why the sun comes up and goes down compared to his master. What you don't understand about religion is that the very spiritual struggle of mankind is why America exists. That the very corruption of America is the same corruption that Satan, you know, the old devil, the fictional character, supposedly, happens to bring metaphorically or fictionally or however when you want to look at it the same exact pattern of behavior the same psychological profile that is Satan that is the demonic legions that is evil in general that is the M.O. of the Horde. Now, I should say Russia, just to put it into modern context, because we've all learned about Vladimir Putin, that he's not a very nice boy. Okay? But 
to understand the historical context of why this country began being settled in the 1500s, you need to understand what a horde was. And that Kivian Rus was enslaved and has only just become free. Slava Ukraina. Moscow. The history of Muscovite Russia is that a trading post that didn't really have anyone to trade with wasn't conquered and used to subdue a local populace. Uh, wasn't set up by slaves to trick other people into being slaves. No. According to history, Moscow just became really influential right after the Horde came through. As if the Horde just gave them a pass. Yeah, I know that didn't happen. But, the Horde just magically disappeared. And then Moscow magically gained influence over all of Kivian Rus. And then these amazing magical white people just kept on going east where the horde came from. And the Horde just said, here you go, you can have our land. And that's how Russia became a giant country. Because Moscow, for basically no reason, suddenly came to dominate Russia proper, you know, Kiev and Rus. And because Moscow suddenly came to dominate Kiev and Rus for no reason. The magical white people got to walk all over the Mongolians, and they just gave their land away without a fight, and it all became one big happy Russian family. That's according to your history. Minus the word magical. I insert the word magical so that it'll make some sense no. Basically, the history is as cut and dry as this. And it's all because of basically one fucking historian. A Roman historian, coincidentally enough. Um, yeah, Holy Roman Catholic people. Read his name. Something that sounded sounds almost coded, but fuck, I can't remember his name. Anyways. I'm bad with names. Hmm. Well. So this guy said that Moscow came to dominate Kivian Rus and you know you get a very detailed history of Kivian Rus you get a very detailed of the history of the noble interactions between Latvia and Lithuania and, and like you know, 
all the relevant kingdoms, and there's history of that. But then when Moscow comes to dominate, it all becomes kind of a blur. It's just Moscow being this, this trading outpost called Moscow. So, you know, whether it's back to the Urals and no real practical connections to anything. comes to dominate everything and then gradually moves eastward. The Mongolian fucking horde just happened. The Mongolian horde then merged with caliphates that formed the Ottoman fuck empire. The Khazarians were still calling themselves the Khazarians and they were right there. also known as the Golden Horde. Oh, and, and, and there's some, there's some just missing pieces of the puzzle right there. When did the Horde conquer Khazaria? Is that story really plausible? Hmm? Sorry, I used to look like, fucking look like evil Camelot. <laughs> anyway. Well, 32 minutes into this video. I'm not, I'm not even close to that. Khazaria is now basically, or actually called Georgia. Or Georgia. Or by the old Latins, Gorgonia. It was like the gateway to hell. I mean, like, if you wanted to sack Morgador, this was the Black Gate. And going north of the Caspian Sea at the time was suicide. Seasonally available. I just remembered something. I was. Into the city. It's in the thirteen hundred. Thirteen forty. They were killing everyone. False charge. Public execution. Going into their home.
think they came for me while I was ill. By the time they had me out of my house, my, my family, and not servants, but employees. Houseworkers, or something called houseworkers. They had all been lined up outside, blindfolded, their hands bound. There's a woman crying. Through her. Through the piece of cloth over her eye. And I was thrown out of my own house, beaten, and made to walk, tied to a car. prison. And then I was sold to an Easterner. He was a, uh, uh, yeah, he had a, a, a brown, golden, gray beard and wore uh, a, a red silk turban. Dark red, gold band. He took me to be sold in the East as ransom. He came and paid the He was behind the whole thing. He was he was behind all of the false information that led to the murders of the Templars. And the Catholics that conspired with him. Gave me to him and, and were paid for him. The same way it seems I. Chronologize. Use that made up word again. Chronologize my own life. My location. It, it seems I, I used to either have map making as a skill or be a map maker because I used to very much dwell on picturing a map of where I was. Not sure, but I want to say that the actual transaction happened in Crimea. It could have been Constantinople. <laughs> <coughs> or is it Istanbul? So, the 
Northern Pass. Um, no one could travel because of basically this guy's raiders. So seasonally, it was possible to pass through there. Now, he would have had no problem passing through Kazari because he was a Kazarian sultan. Cagnani. So, okay. Um, I love it when my my memory comes up with words that I don't fucking know about now. Well, the 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 road north of the Caspian that would usually be blocked off by ice um, would be prone to raiders during the summertime. And the only reason to go that way would be if you were you know, among the party that was in control of it, which they were. And the reason why we went that way is because it was much quicker. Much, much quicker. Much more dangerous for any Westerner, but much quicker. However, and, oh, this is, this, this, oh, this is a really, this is a very important, connected part of the story. <sighs> Some, I want to say Turkmen's. Trying to remember their hats. More of a, a bulge on the side. Kind of turban like bulge on the side. Like something up here. Almost Kazakh like, but Asian. Aryan Asian like, like Tur Turkmen. In Western Zhongzhou? Xiongxiao in, in, in sort of a contested uh, feudal horde kind of family squabble kind of I guess but it was uh, I think they were Islamic but not friendly with the people that were, you know, taking me that way. Um, and I'm pretty sure I was being taken by my memory, okay, to North Korea. So there, there has to be some old dynastic connection to, to the Great Khan. I'm not, I'm not sure if, you know, with the Kim family, but location-wise, there, 
there used to be a great palace there. Well, so the the caravan I was being uh, transported aboard, I was in the back of a wagon. I wasn't you know, walking anymore. I was just to prison from there. Um, At least one of the other prisoners I knew. I distinctly remember his face. He had been in prison for a long time. His beard had just grown everywhere. and His face looked like it hadn't been washed for probably years. I remember his eyes. knew him, but I couldn't remember, or I hadn't seen him. Oh, fuck. But I used to fight with him. He was a comrade at arms. And then when, when, the, when, the, when the caravan got raided, I think some of the other prisoners had died by then, like just sitting in the car in the wagon. As if maybe they were speared from from outside of the wagon. Never even woke up. He and I never went to sleep. And I remember making eye contact with him. Oh, I probably went to sleep. Maybe it was when, when I woke up. And we both knew we had to fight. But our hands were bound. We didn't fight. I don't think we did. They weren't interested in the slaves. Just the gold and the weapons that the uh, that our captors had. E either that or I don't remember the fight. But that's... That's kind of likely. If, uh, if a fight is sporting and laughable, I remember it. When it's... Uh, Terrifying. I don't remember it. So if I recounted this story or tried to remember this story, you know, tried to imprint it on my memory, um, I may have just skipped over that part. But I think it's also likely that they just weren't interested in the slaves. And I, I almost want to say that I have memory of that realization. Were they just not interested in us, or they thought that they'd killed us all? 
but it was very quick. Ah, oh, okay. I got back on the right track. By the time I remember, okay, by the time I... <laughs> There and stop trying to figure it out, and suddenly I remember looking out of the fucking wagon. Oh, it was nighttime. The uh, something was on fire. Oh, yeah, the wagon, but the other wagon was like in pieces on fire. Yeah, the, uh, what the fuck could have done that, though? I can't even consider this. Okay, um... There was a horse dragging around a piece of the wagon that was left attached to him. Um, and the part of that was still on fire. And there were just, like, chunks of this, um... And wooden, well-built, rugged, fucking caravan wagon. And I wonder what could possibly have smashed it like that. But presumably it was on fire before it got smashed. Oh, maybe it exploded. Okay. Yeah, maybe there was some lamp oil on board and it exploded. That would make some sense. <sighs> wow. Oh. is like draining my energy but so um There was a, um, I think a, a Song Dynasty kingdom. And the, uh, the only daughter of the king. And this general diviner ruled everything. Now, the general was the alchemist and in charge of uh, yeah, chemical warfare and, and explosives, and, uh, metallurgy. But the uh, The woman was in charge of the actual command and defense. And 
picture this as a plot correction to the Great Wall movie because we're at that point in the story. Now, the way the alchemist general maintained his power was by claiming to have superior knowledge of the North and the uh, the Dark King. undead type people didn't know what the fuck it was the king of the north and my bartering chip for the survival of myself and my new friend, who apparently was played by Matt Damon or something, else, was that I knew that he, the alchemist general, was lying. Wow, I'm starting to actually remember a plausible path towards how the hell I got trapped in a fucking tree in Australia. Sorry. Just thinking like I remember being threatened if you're lying, I'll sell you to Ulaanbaatar. And it seemed to me that that was only a gateway to the place I really was afraid of going, which was to North Korea. North Korea, I do not know. Pretty sure there was a dragon that lived there. Perhaps the king of the north had made a deal with the dragon. For me. While the uh, King of the North had enmity with me, the dragon could put my uh, genetics to use. So I was certainly afraid of being sold to Lamato. And it was considered to be a pilgrim's town. Because if you went from there to the one place its one road led to, you 
wound up at the Temple of the Dragon. And that's apparently the thing in North Korea that sounds silly. The Temple of the Dragon in North Korea. Sounds like a nice restaurant, doesn't it? When that kingdom was conquered, we fled by ships out to sea and to the pagan tribes, which was a, considered to be a cousin dynasty of the Song. Two families that escaped. Uh, one of the initial cleansings that happened in Sumeria and had settled separately but in friendship. And they were also friends with the Hindi. Great friend. Why they all hate each other now? I don't know. Well, I do. If you could see how beautiful they were as sister states, as, as, as friendly neighbor nations, you would cry to me. Knowing how it is this day. Pagan tribes fled somewhat south, somewhat north. They tried to find the uh, the Aleutians to sail along them to the Undying. New world. Who knows? Had brethren in the Americas already, and they were. Tribal war among the Native American lived for 150 years. I didn't smoke.
used to be basically three massive nations in the East until the Northern King established the Horde. And it was sort of a corrupt, a corrupted mafia of tribes. was Cain resurrected not Zozo son of Cain White, not Asian, not a human by recognizable name. Truly, Nephi. If you saw his face, you would be terrified. I could only draw it for you. I do not know of a fictional character to this day that could. Like, cross the Scientology reptilian dude, right? With Skeletor. And then put him in like a Sauron getup. And like, he's all like at the Tower of Mordor and shit. Not, 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 not fun. Kind of cliche, actually. Hmm. Probably where all the cliches come from. Actually. So, example, what I was saying in the beginning of this video. China eventually fell because they denied their spiritual history. And this is evident in what wound up being told in the Great Wall movie about the certain myth of a meteor falling in the north. And that's what the alchemist general said <clears throat> and um, I do believe hearing of the lies he told to save his own skin in the uh, in the southern land where he Stayed and settled quite peacefully. That area came eventually under indirect horde rule. Because uh, they didn't like the bugs. But I got tired of holding my fucking camera. An hour long video, are you fucking kidding me? But no one, no one was more equipped to come to the Americas than the people. I don't mean like, like 
Catholic and I mean um, Polynesian. I don't know. I don't know what else. Keep on wanting to go deeper and further into this story. Understand that the history of America is directly relevant to what happened after the flood and after the settlement. That's why so much of what the Soviet Union has done has been to promote atheism, to promote the idea that the flood was just a big fucking myth, even though it's been recorded in every ancient history on the planet. Everything's been presented to you in a skeptical way. And I can take everything you've ever heard that made you disbelieve, and I can make you believe even more with those same facts. And the fact is that for American FBI agents, for American CIA agents to stay loyal to this country, they need to understand the existential nature and the imperative that comes with it. what is essentially our struggle for survival. This country is not some corrupt, dominant haven of thieves. Though they flock here for reason. The reason is not because of the innate corruptibility of America. The reason is not because of the innate corruptibility of, of well-meaning institutions like churches. It's because of the reason why those things are innately corruptible. It's because of complex, intentional efforts to corrupt them. Just as Europe was corrupted in the 1200s, just as America has been corrupted for the past 40, 50 years, and then some. And you must understand the source of corruption. That not only is it logistically distributed by the KGB, by the land of the North, by humans from there, but there is also a spiritual pattern to this. I could make a whole different video about demons are real and they're behind a lot of this shit. Extra-dimensional beings are assisting this mafia conspiracy. Yes, they are. That's why I'm here trying to fight it for you, because you don't want to hear about that. But you don't need to understand or take part in that to know your place in that. All you need to understand is why America exists why America's history is actually the continuation of the story in the Bible. And then no Russian bribe, no claim of, oh, this is how to bring about peace, is ever going to corrupt an American government employee again. My name is Sean Morris, and you've been debriefed.